Well, it is Monday, and welcome to our broadcast. We come to you every single Monday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon right here on WROL. And don't forget, you can also hear us through catholicaudiomedia.com. Through that, you might want to subscribe to our podcast if you'd like to do that, so you can get our daily podcast that comes to you if you miss the radio show. So consider that. Uh, that's over at catholicaudiomedia.com. Today's homily, which actually comes to us from yesterday's Mass, 10 o'clock a.m. Mass, the Mass that I tell you you have a standing invitation to come to. Always remember that. I'm talking about some interesting stuff that's very relevant to us today. It comes to us from James's letter. And in that, he talks to those who are not paying what they should be paying, and so they're withholding wages to their workers. And we can turn around, as you'll hear me at the beginning of the reading, say, hey, you know, there's nothing in the Bible that's relevant to us today. Oh, really? Well, you'll find the economy is just as much relevant today as it was back then because it affects our daily life. And so we see this impacted here, and James addresses it. Now, we're not going to hear that reading But you can go read the reading after you hear the homily. It's the fifth chapter of James, verses 1 through 6. So James 5, 1 through 6. And he talks about people who are gaining all their riches at at the expense of the poor. And as you'll hear, that this is a major issue that we're called to address as Christians, especially as Catholic Christians, all the time. So here it is from yesterday. I always get a kick out of when people claim that the, that the Bible is so old it's no longer relevant to us today. It reminds me of an interview I heard this week uh, from two evolutionary biologists who talked about advances in civilizations and pointed out that the people, people themselves are the same. And so the people don't change. So this constant essentially anchors all other forms of development into something quite ancient, the human race. For example, have you listened to some members of our congressional delegation lately? They call for some strict law regarding the rich and the poor, but I'm not sure that what they say is anywhere as intense is what God calls us to as we see in today's second reading. If you look carefully, we have to understand that being rich is not a sin. But if we put our riches uh, to be the center of our life, then we are living as idolaters. In fact, elsewhere, St. Paul describes greed as idolatry. And remember, the worst sin in the Bible is idolatry. Now let's look more closely at these words. What is James speaking to his readers about? First, understand every word in the New Testament is written to Christians. Nothing is written to non-Christians, except as a tool of evangelization. So the intended audience of these words is rich Christians. Further, they embrace Christ in theory, but nothing in their life has changed, and some of their practices are not only wrong, they're hurting others. In fact, in the Old Testament, these practices are considered abominations, and in Catholic teachings, they scream out to heaven for vengeance. The reason why these people embrace these practices is to build their wealth and security at the expense of the poor. St. James addresses them for this attitude because he's explaining that what they are doing is not only sinful, but will also lead to their spiritual and physical demise. Anytime this happens in our church, or for that matter, the pursuit of anything but holiness, it causes great damage. I often hear people say how happy they are that the company they apply to is a Christian company. Sometimes that makes me nervous. There were some great Christians, and there were some great Christian companies, and there were some great Christians that run companies. And there are others that are lost in prosperity doctrine, which teaches that the more you believe in God, he will reward you materially. That teaching is not Catholic. In fact, I can say the more we seek Christ, the more our difficulties become. What becomes problematic is those who maintain outward practices appearing faithful to God while living a life focused on riches is an issue. 
Notice specifically what is condemned, withholding the wages of another, paying someone less than what is a just wage. However, in our world, we honor the billionaire. We consider him or her successful. And in fact, the material world does uh, consider him successful as well. I would never, never forget in the kingdom of God, every rich person is responsible for every dollar he or she has. So if you have billions of dollars to your name, when, you're, when you die, you will be held accountable for each and every one. If you use your money to help others and to lead people out of poverty, then you will be rewarded. If you exploit the label of others, then you can have more that they can have, of course, but you will be punished. Let us talk about the person who lives at the lowest level of the economic scale. He or she gets his car towed for street cleaning violations. The person does not have the money to get the car out of the impound yard, impound yard, and daily there is a large fee added to the storage fee, and there are tickets and fines. Every day the person cannot get the car out of the impound yard, the more the person cannot afford the growing high fee. Eventually the impound yard sells the car for expenses. The person is still responsible for fines and fees, which alone can be in the thousands. Does this happen? Yes, and it is legal. In fact, it's the law. The people most subject to this are at the bottom of the economic scale, the least able to afford it. I learned of a man who was a successful founder of a company. He makes quite a bit of money, so much so when someone talked to him about FICA, he asked, what is this FICA? And then realized that is the fee they take out of his first check every year. Dorothy Day taught, to convert the poor, you must be like them. To convert the rich, you must be unlike them. Again, there is nothing wrong with being poor or rich. How you use your money is the issue. We do not believe in socialism as Catholics. We believe everyone has the right to private property. However, we also believe we have a duty to share what we have with those who have not. It's also a great mistake to believe that the poor are by default good and the rich are by default bad. Neither is true. However, we as Catholics have a duty to live as people who are always accountable to our Lord for all we have. About 20 years ago, there was a bit of a controversy at the USCCB headquarters in Washington. The building is a multi-million dollar construction, and when it, when it was built, many Catholics were against it, actually, when they were building it. They felt the USCCB did, which is the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, did need headquarters, but they did not need a multi-million dollar structure. The reason for the building is to make it clear that the Catholic bishops have a voice in the U.S. government, as does any organization. Some would say, if we want to say anything to our government, we do it one way through our pursuit of holiness. The next time you hear any member of our government give an economic statement, make sure you square it with our Catholic faith. You might find it may seem controversial, but after your research, you discover the statement is less radical than what we as Catholics teach. And many in the media may not understand how powerful those teachings are. You're listening to the voice of St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WROL, 950 AM, 100.3 FM. And you can also hear us at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. We'll be right back right after this. Do you know that you can put together an adoration chapel of your own in your own house? With concerns surrounding the coronavirus and social distancing, many miss the opportunity to pray before the Blessed Sacrament. However, with a little ingenuity, it is quite easy and you are not doing anything irreverent or illicit. Simply search Eucharistic Adoration Live on YouTube and several live channels in different parts of the world will pop up. Now you can engage in Eucharistic Adoration in your own home if it is not available in your local parish church. Eucharistic Adoration Live on YouTube. St. Anthony Parish, Alston, Massachusetts. Hey, and don't forget our website, catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. You can check out our website, check out the archives of the show, check out our sub stack newsletter 
And uh, you can also donate to the show. You can send us feedback. You can send us prayer requests. You can do all kinds of things over there at catholicaudiomedia.com. By the way, a special announcement. Uh, if you uh, have someone in your family, lives in the Alston Brighton area, and would like to take a class in confirmation in the high school, uh, this is high school age, um, in order to be confirmed, uh, please let us know. We're going to start confirmation classes next week. Um, it's a limited amount. We're doing an experimental uh, system, and it's going to be uh, a, a limited amount. It's going to be mostly study of like original documents, so it'll be kind of interesting. And uh, in order to do that, just sign up at St. Anthony confirmation saint st anthony confirmation.com or send us a note through our website through catholic audiomedia.com and go where it says contact so either one of those ways to contact us if you have an interest by the way the class will be free so anyway here we are at uh looking at some of our powerful teachings powerful social teachings a lot of our social teachings comes from a document that came out from pope leo the 13th and it's called Rerum Navarum. And usually, I've done this in two parishes so f- so far, where we have actually studied Rerum Navarum. And th- the thing that fascinates people, usually I do it somewhere around uh, before an election, not necessarily like the week before an election, but several months before an election and when I've done it. And what happens is people are just shocked that the document itself, Rerum Navarum, is obviously much younger than the letter from James, but it's still about 100, um, oh, maybe about 130, 100, I think it's about 150 years old at this point. And it's a powerful document that talks about the very issues we see in James. And most of the teaching that I used in the homily that I talked about what the Catholic Church teaches actually comes from my experience with that document. So it's a powerful thing. And among the things it actually says that unions should work for, by the way, is allowing people to go to church on Sunday. That should be a right that unions work for. You may or may not know that the church supports unions. So that should be a right that unions work for because that is part of who we are as human beings. But it also talks about just wage and just working conditions and best ways to support the family and all kinds of things like that. So you see that in Rerum Navarm, so it's pretty powerful in that whole concept of exactly what it is that we believe as Catholics. And it goes right back to James and, of course, other documents as well. Well, we are getting ready to move on, so we will see you tomorrow, 3 o'clock in the morning and also midnight on WEZE, 590 AM, and we'll be here tomorrow, a whole different program, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, as we always are. You can also follow us on Twitter, by the way. We're at Alston Saint. That's the parish Twitter. Fairly new. At Alston Saint. So anyway, we will see you tomorrow. Have a blessed day. In Cristo vivimos.